Yo, what up? Toshi here. With Nihildi characters being the talk of the town and recently Silverwolf becoming the best hunt character in the game. Okay, yes, I am just exaggerating for the whales. I find myself still flocking to the path of the hunt, and it's not just me coping because I got two of Yang Ching's light code from the standard banner. Or maybe it is. <laughs> so first off, we have to understand exactly how the hunt characters work in Honkai Soro. Let me explain. You have a character like Seal, for example, that gets the most value out of using her abilities against enemies that are weak to single target damage. That's pretty much self-explanatory, but the character gets the most value in team settings called the Hyper Carry Team Composition for short. And essentially, you put all of your resources into Seal to bring out the most of this character, to give this character the most damage amplification you can give her possible, thus giving her the maximum amount of damage she can do possible. And the reason why you want to do that is because the character gets a lot of value from one shot an enemy with her ultimate, or her skills at that, but mostly her ultimate. If she's able to one shot said enemy, or deal massive amounts of damage and then finish off the enemy later with a skill, she will get a lot of more value because of her resurgence. This allows Seal to get an additional turn whenever she kills the enemy. It's going to be very massive considering this character wants to constantly proc this in order to get turns over and over again. But that is if you have a very strong seal and give her tons of investment not only from your support, but from the light cones and the best gear possible. And then you have another character like Dan Heng, who also benefits from getting a lot of resources funneled to his kit. Given how Dan Heng works, you get a lot of value using Bronya's elemental skill on this character. That in turn allows Dan Heng to get the wind resistant penetration for his next attack which is going to be very valuable for a character that wants to one-shot the enemy. And the reason why this works is because hunt characters are usually support-eccentric, or support supporters-eccentric, we should say, because you want to have them in the hyper-carry team comp and have a lot of supports that make those characters better in what they do. Wow, wow, wow. With how the hunt works in Honkai Soro, Genshin Impact has a lot of team-eccentric, hyper-carry-focused DPS characters. Hu Tao Hyper Carry is one of the best teams in the game. It is a very stat hungry and very expensive team to build, so having a team centered around Hu Tao makes a lot of sense, because you ideally want the character to not only vape her charge hits, you also want her to vape her ultimate, and you also want her to do as much damage as she can, thus having characters that buff not only the damage, but allow her to get the extra multiplier with the elemental reaction system. With the Raiden Shogun Hyper Carry team, you essentially have a team centered around supporting the almighty, I forgot the rest of the name, Shogun. You have a maxed out Kujosaru most of the time, then you have a Bennett and a Kazuha, because these characters enrich the performance of Raiden Shogun. And once you have all of these characters supporting Shogun, you essentially have a very strong main DPS function like character, although you can use her in different various ways. Although a team like that would be very expensive and very stat hungry, once you do achieve the general stat line of said team comp, then you'll be presented with a very strong team comp. And last but not least, the Eula Hyper Carry team. This team is focused around making sure that Eula can deal as much damage as she can. You see, this character needs the best supports and she needs the best stats. One of the hardest characters to build and one of the hardest characters to make work. Because, well, she is the epitome of pulling putting all your eggs in one basket, and you know what happens when you do that. But once the team works, it works really well, and you'll be presented with a team that does massive amounts of damage. It's no joke, just look at the people that have C6 versions of this character. Now we have to dial back to Honkai Star Rail. Crit rate and crit damage is going to be very important for your DPS characters in said hyper carry team comp. You see, with the stat line of crit rate and crit damage being extremely hard to achieve, there's other team comps that take advantage of not necessarily needing to have crit and crit damage. So whenever you have a hyper carry eccentric focused team comp, the threshold for damage is higher, but the bare minimum, the threshold to get the team comp off the ground is a lot higher than another team comp. You know, let's just say the Kafka dot team, for example. But once you do have the stat line down, you will have a very strong team comp. That's why Seal is still one of the best characters in the game especially now with Silverwolf into existence. But while we're at it, let's go ahead and talk about Silverwolf. You see, Silverwolf provides tons of value for your hyper carry centric team. The reason why she's very good is because not only does she lower the resistance of the enemy, but she also lowers the defenses. 
while also putting massive amounts of debuffs on the enemy and doing a lot of personal damage herself. She's a very nice strong character to have in your team comps regarding any character, not just the hunt, but hunt really benefit the most from this character. And going forward, she will definitely be a very necessary character to use in your team comps if you are using hunt category characters. The reason why this matters is because characters like Silverwolf will not only enrich the performance of hyper carry teams, thus allowing the path of the hunt to excel more at what they do, seeing will target big PP damage, but also she gives the amplifications of what the future of the hunt class is going to be as a whole. You see, the hunt benefits from having massive amounts of supporters, thus boosting up the damage of one character in that team comp, or maybe two depending on what characters you have. And the reason why this is very important is because you're not going to really be looking at just the DPS themselves, but the supporters behind the DPS. Without a character like Bronya, you really wouldn't get much value out of your hyper carry teams. She's a very strong character. She allows your DPS to take the turn. She increases their damage greatly. She also gives a very nice attack buff and a crit damage buff, all while cleansing a debuff from said ally. She's going to be a very poor character going forward with your hyper carry teams. And well, of course, you know, it's it's brawny, of course. And then you have another very nice support character like Asta, who is a four star everyone gets for free. This character will always provide you a lot of value because not only having a team wide speed boost is going to be very important, but being able to have your attack boosted from just one character. She gives a lot of attack boost. And if you equip her with other light cones from the harmony path, you will get more damage bonuses overall for the team comp. And essentially, whenever you have a team centered around one character, you want to funnel all of your resources into said character, hence why it is called the hyper carry team. And Asta does that perfectly, but she also enriches the performance of the team overall. Given how the hunt characters work, we can draw a couple conclusions going forward. We do understand that there is going to be a hunt character for each element. We also know that there is going to be a hunt character for each rarity in the game, 4 star and 5 star. You see, currently we only have four hunt characters. Maybe some of you know more than Toshi when it comes to characters coming forward into the future, right? Ahem, regarding leaks, of course. So we'll probably be moving towards a future where your hunt characters are going to be relying more on supports than anything to thus get the most out of their kits. You see, there's only so much you can do with a character that just does damage to a single target. You can give them more damage, of course, but that's all you can really do. It's going to be very hard to power creep said hunt DPS characters unless you have a character that just does more damage than the other one. Or if you have a character so busted like Seal, you literally have to make an enemy designated to make her weaker. That is unless you're not using a character like Payla. Yeah, maybe that character was a little too strong. But your supporters are going to be the most important part of your team going forward. And with that being said, a character like Silverwolf is going to be very nice for your account because she's going to allow you to play with any hunt character going forward. She'll allow you to play with any DPS character going forward, but if you are a hunt main like myself, you probably will enjoy having a character that allows you to enjoy hunt characters even more. But she has the most damage as a debuffer when you max out her copies. It's still insane I'm saying that, and that makes me realize maybe hunt characters are not going to be the strongest characters going forward. Having a team centered around one character to thus get the most out of said character to deal the most damage possible is something I really enjoy. Maybe that might be the adrenaline junkie in me speaking, but I really do enjoy characters like Seal and how she plays. I stream daily on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Toshio, the link will be in the description. Thank you for watching and have a nice rest of your weekend. I guess I'm skipping Jinglu now.